Hollywood is a town full of hopeless romantics who might kick ass in their professional lives, but flounder pretty hard when it comes to the dating game. The ever-driven Princess Carolyn certainly falls into this genre of LA mover and or shaker, and spends a lot of her screen time in BoJack Horseman navigating various relationship woes. Even though her story is not unique in lonely Los Angeles, PC doesn't exhibit the best dating habits, and her quest for Mr. Right is filled with all kinds of relationship wrongs. Manipulation, deceit, heartbreak, you name it. Despite this, PC always manages manages to land on her feet because cat. Despite speed bumps along the way, she always strives for romantic happiness. Sure, a happiness she sometimes has to reassure herself she deserves, but a striven for happiness nonetheless. We all know by now that PC eventually gets it right with her assistant, and if you didn't know that, well, the show ended four years ago and I'm not even sure why you're watching this video. But to truly understand how she reaches the emotional sanctuary she finds with Judah, we should take a look at the inner workings of each adult relationship that our favorite furry agent experiences in the series. And what better place to start than with the eponymous BoJack Horseman. But first, if you like my BoJack videos, I've got something pretty cool to share with you. This video is brought to you by my Patreon, and I've just started releasing BoJack Horseman episode commentaries exclusive to that platform. Basically an audio track you can line up while watching the show to hear my takes and comments on the series in real time, conveniently located on a private podcast RSS feed. I'll be releasing a new one every week until we finish the series, and then you can help me decide what series I do commentary for next. I've also got other big plans for the Patreon, including a Patreon only Discord server, and sneak peeks at some of my big plans for the upcoming year. Patreon is the best way to support me directly, and I can't thank you enough for watching. Thanks, let's get back to BoJack. BoJack was a classic piece of shit to PC when they first met, mostly because she was a mere assistant and therefore beneath him. Despite this, she worked tirelessly to appease him, a motif that will appear again and again in their relationship. Right from the jump, we start seeing that one of PC's best defense mechanisms is compartmentalization, a tool she utilizes often to deal with BoJack's impulsive and self-destructive nature. This monopolizes a lot of her time, and eventually, patience. You take up 80% of my time with your drama and make me 0% of my money. Do the damn commercial. Despite how obviously toxic he behaves, PC enables Bojack anyway, a trait she learned from dealing with her lovely mother. Perhaps this is the inspiration for the maternal role PC fills for Bojack, as she time and time again goes out of her way to help him, and he responds like a shitty little boy dragging his feet in a Kmart because he didn't get his toy. I went through hell and back today, but it was worth it, because I got you a job! Aren't you excited? I don't know. I don't care about that. But Bojack can't really meet her halfway in much of anything. We don't see him put in a fraction of the same effort towards meeting her needs. Part of it is because she doesn't force boundaries or long-term consequences onto him, but it's also because Bojack doesn't know what a stable relationship looks like, at least outside of what he sees on TV sitcoms. Bojack's approach to dealing with conflict in adulthood is every horseman for himself. He's profoundly self-centered and jaded, only caring about stuff like, do people like me, and where is the alcohol? He lacks the maturity to be a considerate partner to Princess Carolyn, whether she's fun functioning as his agent or his lover. He just sees her as a mother figure he wasn't privy to as a foal. And a mother figure is never a great thing to date. But don't tell it to half of the porn out there. Despite this, PC is fairly understanding of how messed up Bojack is, and it's one of the reasons she stays with him for so long. Your heart is tender, so you protect it from people, but sometimes you open up a wall and it's incredible. You're doing the best you can considering your asshole parents. PC does get better at calling Bojack out on his horse shit, but unfortunately, this reckoning only really starts to take shape after they whittle their relationship down to professional only. After a fight that ends in PC inexplicably preparing a fancy risotto for a food critic at Elefante, Bojack finally admits that he knows he sucks and that he doesn't deserve her. I do love you, by the way. I mean, as, as much as I'm capable of loving anyone, which is never enough. I'm sorry. Despite this revelation, Bojack ends up dropping PC as his agent, which sends her business into a tailspin. This ends up as a blessing in disguise for PC, who finally has enough space from Bojack to grow. Without PC's safety net underneath him, Bojack falls into one of his many spirals. Princess Carolyn is forced to restructure not only her struggling agency, but her love life as well. She uses her newfound free time to get back out there, at the recommendation of the assistant she'd end up marrying. Again, you've had time, you're already this far into the video. This is not a spoiler. Even though they cross paths constantly throughout the series, PC and Bojack never worked together as a healthy couple. She stuck with him for so long simply because he appealed to her ingrained codependent tendencies. I don't want to spend the next seven years of my life falling in and out of love with you. I've wasted too much time waiting for things to happen. 
and I'm not gonna wait anymore. Princess Carolyn compulsively takes care of others when she doesn't know how to take care of herself, which, as it happens, was a pretty long era for her. When she gets out of her relationship with Bojack, it is the first step into taking her own needs into consideration. There was no way this would have happened if she kept herself ingrained in the imbalanced dynamic she had with Bojack. <laughs> In the midst of a rebound phase from Bojack, PC runs into the tall, boyishly handsome, but definitely fully grown human male Vincent Adultman at Bellakin's bar. He's everything she wants at that moment. A good listener, a kind, and also adult man. The works, really. They hit it off over some alcohols and have a great time chatting about life in the business factory world. Classic adult things. PC's infatuation may not be entirely genuine, as we see early on that she loves to show off Vincent to anyone with an earshot, particularly Bojack. I mean, can you imagine this body in a swimsuit? I literally cannot. Their relationship hits choppy water fairly quickly, as will happen with impulsive rebounds. Vincent has trouble prioritizing his life. When he's not talking about doing a business, he's only interested in going to R-rated movies and riding the adult rides at Disneyland. He lacks the spontaneous romantic passion that PC craves, which is shocking considering how he's clearly one man and not three kids in a trench coat. PC demands the pair break up because she realizes that there's more to life than work by now, and doesn't love that Vincent is echoing the parts of her workaholic life that she's trying to overcome. In a big romantic gesture, Vincent tries to win Princess Carolyn back by crashing a party at Mr. Peanut Butter's house, pledging his love to her in front of everyone, which is an awesome move and everyone should try it because it always works. I had an attitude problem. But then I took a time out and I thought about what I did. The pair get back together only for more lies and secrets to start piling up. Princess Carolyn sees a mysterious child crossing the street that is the spitting image of her beau. Clearly, Vincent's been hiding a secret family this whole time. There's no way he just has two friends with sturdy shoulders. Vincent tries to wriggle out of the drama with his very believable story. Kevin is my son, but I'm divorced. And Kevin is in the bathroom, so you can see we're clearly two different people. One adult and one child. Even though this makes perfect sense, the lack of transparency and honesty is the true breaking point in PC and Vincent's relationship. Vincent is more interested in navigating his own web of lies than working to gain PC's trust. Princess Carolyn also levels with Vincent, stating that she only fell in love with the idea of him, rather than who he really was, which was definitely one single man. At the end of their time together, they both realize they still need to do some internal work before they can hope for a healthy, adult relationship. The next paramour that enters PC's life is her fast-talking rabbit colleague, Rutabaga Rabidowitz. The two jive really well as professional pals, which eventually leads to them having an office fling. Rutabaga seems chipper on the surface, but often displays a two-facedness commonly associated with Hollywood bigwigs. At the end of the day, he's all about his own successes and will deceive PC to no end to get what he wants, all while slick-talking his little tail off. You were seriously killing it in the department of kicking ass in regards to you being an agent and being good at it vis-a-vis -vis crushing it. There's no substance to Rutabaga as a boyfriend. His affair with PC lasts for three months and is toxic in many ways, most notably because he's cheating on his wife, which is generally frowned upon, unless they're both into it. Rutabaga tries to woe is me his way around this huge red flag, consistently reassuring PC that he and his wife Katie are going to be divorced any day now. He strings her along so far, in fact, that he convinces her to start a whole ass agency with him. Like a classic narcissist, Rutabaga manipulates PC by saying he could really start this agency with anyone, right before pouring on the compliment bombing that is particularly particularly effective on PC at this time in her life. You're an amazing agent, and you're bright, and you're fun, and I think we could make something really special. All the while, his only move here was just to stick PC with the financial responsibility of this impulsive decision to leave Vigor, because divorce proceedings. He then says quite possibly one of the shittiest things said by any character in BoJack Horseman, which is quite an accomplishment. Carolyn, you're a single woman in your 40s. Can you really afford to be picky? This is it, Carolyn. This is what you get, and if you're holding out for something better, well... I hate to break it to you, but you're gonna be alone for a long time. What Rutabaga didn't foresee is that PC has grown enough to tell him to eat shit. She'd rather be alone than stay with someone so blatantly selfish. So, even with the massive burden of starting a new agency now on her shoulders, PC does what any self-respecting cat lady would do. She throws the whole man out. It was pretty apparent from the jump that this relationship was doomed to fail. Rutabaga is a total dickhead. He's cowardly, disingenuous, self-absorbed, and to a lesser degree of importance, really annoying. I got seven kids and a wife who's really into me co-parenting, or as she calls it, 
parenting. He thought he could manipulate PC in order to alleviate marital stresses, further his career, and avoid financial responsibility. PC is taken for a ride, but ultimately outsmarts him and kicks his ass to the curb, out manipulating the manipulator. The only good thing Rutabaga did for PC was push her in the right direction, albeit under sketchy pretenses. His encouragement gave her the boost she needed during a low point to leave her comfort zone, and once she got there, she was more than happy to leave his toxic dead weight behind. At the tail end of an evening of blind dates, PC meets a greeting card company owner, Ralph Stilton, a polite and intelligent mouse fella. Despite the glaringly obvious differences up top, the two have a healthy and fun chemistry. PC can't quite commit herself to another date right off the bat due to work stuff, but they exchange numbers and hope to keep in touch. Here's my card. If you're ever free, give me a call. If not, I'll just meet somebody else and invite you to the wedding. <laughs> oh, thanks. You don't have to come, but... Mm. Send a gift. When PC calls him up, Ralph sticks to this bit and tricks her into thinking he's met a ballerina and already married her before revealing he's been thinking about Princess Carolyn nonstop. Hey, the mouse has game. Their ensuing relationship looks to be the first healthy and happy one of its kind in Princess Carolyn's life so far. Ralph is lively and caring, and it doesn't hurt that he's also the heir to the Stilton luxury hotel chain, but he's not a douchebag about it and chooses to live a more subdued lifestyle than the rest of his one percenter family. PC is not without her share of hesitations, however. She has a hard time telling Ralph the truth about about her miscarriage because she fears the repercussions. Ralph eases her fears, stating that he's not worried about being stuck with her, but rather an opportunity to raise a family with her. When the two move in together, PC keeps the lease to her old apartment in a one foot out the door, head for the hills if things go rough type of way, which is indicative of her relationship anxieties. Deep down, PC believes things are too good to be true with Ralph, and when you look at her track record, you can certainly understand why she might feel this way. This makes it harder for her to be truly vulnerable and open with him at times. The first big wedge in their relationship ends up being Ralph's wealthy family. Like most people who have never had to do their own chores, they appear to be very nice and welcoming on the surface while remaining firmly out of touch with how the real world works. When PC and Ralph visit the Stiltons for the holidays, Ralph doesn't let his family know that PC is pregnant, wanting them to warm up to her first. And then the racist mice supremacist shit starts going down. Ralph's family celebrates an aggressively anti-cat holiday as an annual tradition, which probably should have been explained to PC on the drive up. Like, for real. Imagine bringing Bringing your partner to a family dinner without telling them that there will be an enthusiastic screening of Birth of a Nation. To his credit, I guess, Ralph does eventually stand up for PC after his mother gets mad that Princess Carolyn isn't into the racist bullshit going on. But man, does it take him a while to get there. For your information, there's not gonna be a next one because I love Princess Carolyn and we're having a baby and I couldn't be happier. It's eventually a nice gesture, but life gets in the way once again. PC loses a client, finds out Judah made some pretty big business mistakes, and to top it all off, breaks the clasp off her signature necklace. Oh yeah, and then another miscarriage happens. Many speculate that PC's signature necklace itself is to blame for her infertility issues as it's made out of lead, but we of course can't confirm this definitively. Understandably, this is a lot for PC to bear, and she goes on a bender which culminates in her lying to Ralph about the entire situation. Surely this will end great. PC is normally able to keep her shit together, but this second miscarriage is a particularly tough sting because it feels like a subconscious jab from her mother, who was what you might call very fertile. In fact, it was the only talent Cutie had aside from gaslighting her daughter and passing out on the couch. In the midst of not keeping her shit together, she takes out her frustrations on Ralph and accidentally reveals that she lost the unborn Filbert. Not only has she been hiding this, but she's also been hiding her unfortunate history with miscarriages, which puts a definite strain on their relationship. Obviously, this kind of thing is not easy to talk about, out, but it's certainly something you need to make your partner aware of if you're serious about starting a family with them. Now begins the stage of their relationship where things break down. Their communication is strained. Every innocuous comment feels like a personal attack. PC does not want to hear about alternatives to pregnancy. Her and Ralph are now in two entirely different headspaces regarding family planning options. And Ralph doesn't quite understand why having a traditional pregnancy means so much to Princess Carolyn. Ralph has mentioned that he loves how easy his relationship with PC is, but what we start seeing is that it might have only been easy because Princess Carolyn was doing a lot of work to keep up that facade, and now her classic workaholic, I can do it all if I power through mentality, is surfacing in a rough way. She has a hard time accepting her limitations, and it's starting to wear on their relationship. This leads to the end of their relationship, at Princess Carolyn's insistence. He's reluctant to leave her since she's clearly struggling with a lot internally, but he does accept that they are at an impasse. I just think we should maybe talk about other options. Okay, here's another option. 
Get out of my apartment! Um, it's a bummer how things ended with PC and Ralph in a lot of ways. It certainly can be seen as a right person, wrong time situation. Ralph has clearly been the best partner to Princess Carolyn at this point in her life, but the two couldn't quite align enough in order to move on to the next stage of their relationship. Ralph can be timid and conflict avoidant, but functionally, he wanted their relationship to be upfront and honest, working through issues together as a team. Princess Carolyn has a hard time accepting this type of vulnerability due to past traumas and failed relationships. She's used to being disappointed by lovers so often that she naturally feels unable to rely on anyone else, even when they have the purest of intentions. She pushes Ralph away because she does not feel in control with him, and she doesn't believe he is in it for the long haul with her fertility situation. The two reconnect some time later, and they patch things up in a pretty mature way. Ralph admits to some regrets about the way things went down, but PC ultimately makes it clear that she's ready to approach motherhood on her own terms as a single mother. PC is not afraid of being a single mom, but doesn't yet grasp how drastic of a change motherhood will be for her. Between the lifestyle adaptations and increased workload, being a single parent is a tough job. A, uh, ruthless one, if you will. Eh? Eh? Hey folks, thanks as always for watching the video. If you're a fan of the channel, please check out my Patreon. It's the best way to support me directly. Also, feel free to follow me on social media, particularly Letterboxd, which is the only good social media platform. Thanks. Finally, we have former employee slash current badass, ya boy, Judah Man Now Dog. Look, Judah rules. If you don't like Judah, you can fight me about it. Judah is an ideal employee, professional, polite, and highly capable. He was PC's rock when they were getting Vim off of the ground, he kept her schedule in order, reminded her of important calls and meetings, and would take on new responsibilities at the office with no complaints. Judah's flat affect and restrained emotions definitely takes some getting used to, but he's an incredibly reliable person and definitely someone you want to have on your team. Like anyone else, he's also not without his own mistakes. Judah does a bit of sneaking around PC's back as her assistant and meets with a very sticky Charlie Witherspoon to entertain the idea of a merger between Vim and Vigor. Judah keeps this meeting under wraps for a while, and in his mind, it does appear to be done out of care for PC and her chaotic workload. Princess Carolyn can be a proud woman. I'm glad you came to me first. This occurs in the midst of PC's most stressful period, trying to do way too much at the same time, dealing with a challenge from Anna Spanakopita, battling Vanessa Gecko and Rutabaga to secure roles for Bojack. When it all falls through, putting the agency in dire straits, PC lashes out at Judah. Despite this, in a shocking display of loyalty, Judah forgoes his salary for three months to try and soften the financial blow. Not only does he support PC financially, but he takes these moments to support her emotionally as well. There is one thing I should probably mention. What is it, Judah? Maybe this is an opportunity to live one of your other eight lives. Unfortunately, it's shortly after this poignant moment that PC finds out about the merger offer. When she confronts Judah about this, she's hoping it's all a lie, but Judah doesn't hide it from her at all. Even though all of his intentions were good, he can't escape the fact that he betrayed her trust. It didn't help that she found this out on probably the worst day of her adult life. If I can't trust you, then I can't work with you. You're fired. Judah is, of course, disappointed, but leaves calmly. Very Judah-like response. Thank you for my time here, Princess Carolyn. It's been very pleasurable. Until now. This part is... Sad. PC soldiers on, adopting a baby girl eventually, managing Vim by herself, and assigning the profoundly unhelpful Stuart to assistant duties. She's certainly struggling to keep her head above water with all of these responsibilities. Classic Princess Carolyn shit right there. Exhausted, overscheduled, underslept, and not necessarily loving it. A couple of years later, PC and Lenny Turtletop lead the negotiations in the Hollywood assistance protest. They're handled in a pretty standard Hollywood fashion, greedily and speedily. But during a meeting with noted dumbass Stuart, PC has has a moment of clarity. She sees that she is using the same manipulative tactics that her former boss used to use on her, stringing underpaid folks along, encouraging them to accept shitty treatment with the promise of some gain down the road. Having had this moral realization, PC gives Stuart the phone number for someone who can help get things back on track, an expert negotiator by the name of Judah. Once an actual agreement is reached in the strike negotiations, PC invites Judah back to work at Vim with a hell of a promotion. This serves as both an olive branch for how things ended and a sincere 
sincere recognition for how much PC trusts him. Judah returning to Vim significantly de-stresses PC's life. He is a singularly trustworthy and reliable colleague in a sea of Hollywood flakes who will tell you they can't make your party because they have COVID, but then post a dozen Instagram stories at the club. Judah also tends to interpret things very literally, and it is heavily implied that he lies somewhere on the autism spectrum. Between his orderly nature, difficulty interpreting tone of voice, and his band Spectrum of Enchantment, there are certainly a few hints to the audience that this is the case. And these aspects of Judah's personality actually make him thrive in the highly detail-oriented environment of Hollywood. He's incredibly thoughtful and thorough, ensuring PC's life is as streamlined as possible. He's exactly what PC needs at this point in her life. She's been through the ringer with partners over the years, and Judah represents all of the things that these previous men were missing. He's attentive to her needs, unlike Bojack, he isn't caught up in his own web of lies like full-grown adult Vincent Adultman, and has a healthy work-life balance. He's not currently cheating on a wife, unlike Rutabaga, and unlike Ralph, he knows how to communicate with PC and isn't thrown off by her specific idiosyncrasies that could be perceived as difficult. Plus, he serenades her with guitar, which I don't think anyone has ever done for her in her whole life. He's the logical conclusion to her romantic saga. Emphasis on logical. What can I say? He's pretty much perfect for her. Despite all the chaos in her life, PC falls for a guy with long hair and a beard who loves the serenader with guitar music. I don't know why, but that resonates with me somehow. Over the course of the series, we see Princess Carolyn go from tolerating deplorable behavior to recognizing and receiving the better treatment she deserves. This princess has kissed more than her fair share of frogs throughout her life, and they pretty much all remained frogs. She deserved a happy ending and a Prince Charming. That Prince Charming is Judah. There's a reason the final episode is her wedding. Some fans definitely seem to prefer Ralph more, and that's also fair in its own way. PC and Ralph have a more cutesy rom-com vibe when they're not hanging out with a bunch of anti-cat bigots, and it can be hard to accept that he didn't do anything abhorrently wrong in their relationship. Sometimes a string of specific circumstances cause good things to end, and that's just the way it is. It's sad. And if you're one of those who thinks Ralph was a better endgame, I get it. But things not working out with Ralph was necessary for PC to recognize and admit that she has some deep-seated issues to work out. It was a moment of clarity where she had run out of messes to clean up in other people's lives and was forced to reevaluate her own flaws. PC's entire character arc is based on viewing her life and the conflicts within through the lens of the sunk cost fallacy. This is when someone sticks with something detrimental simply because of the amount of work they've already put into it. Like having a shitty 1997 Ford Taurus that barely runs but has had so much money dumped into it you can't bring yourself to junk it. This is why PC had a hard time leaving her mother as a young woman, why she stuck with Bojack for so long, why she put up with being an assistant for 14 miserable years, and why she always resists asking for help whenever she's in turmoil. She's made caretaking and damage control part of her own self-image. You water the plants here? I started doing it as an intern, but then no one told me to stop, so it's still kind of my job. Pretty much every member of Bojack Horseman has their own issues with their biological families, some more extreme than others, certainly. But like many Hollywood transplants, they come to find their own family outside of their blood relatives with those they choose to surround themselves with. Despite years of setbacks, PC has finally created her own found family with a husband who loves her and a lovely adopted daughter. The fall might have been lofty, but Princess Carolyn always lands on her feet. Johnny! I stay mellow watching Johnny two cellos. He talks cartoons, he's a really cool fellow. He keeps you posted on adult cartoons. If that's what you're into, then grab a spoon and a very big bowl of your favorite cereal. Feels like Saturday morning cartoon material. Johnny two cellos, watch him on YouTube. Now enjoy this groove and bust a move.